Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm your host, That One Camera Guy, and in this episode, we're gonna be talking about the Nikon D500, what the specs are, and what does this mean for photographers and videographers alike. Right now, I'm just gonna tell you, I, I just, I looked up the announcements earlier this afternoon, finally got home this evening, and I finally had some time to kind of think about the whole camera. Honestly, the, when I first heard about it, when I was reading online, I actually thought it was a full frame camera, but it was really just a DX. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna go over the specs very quickly and kind of talk about the impact it's gonna have sort of on the photography community as well as the video community. What I'm gonna say is that the original D300S has not come out, I would say for over five years, I think. It's been over five years, four or five years, and a lot of Nikon fans and, and fi uh, Nikon enthusiasts and, and camera users have been pining over a successor to the D300S. And for the longest time, the Nikon user base has had to settle with the Nikon D7100. And in many cases, some would end up leaving. Uh, what's great about this is that no one really saw this coming. Uh, there was discussions on Nikon rumors that they were going to have a Nikon D5. That was a given, but there wasn't a whole lot of talk about a possible D300S successor. And, and there were pretty much hints saying that it just wasn't gonna happen. But lo and behold, uh, today, depending on when you watch this, there is now a Nikon D400 successor and it aims to really squash Canon in so many ways. First off, this camera is really a direct comparison to the, to the Canon 7D Mark II, um, which I have here. So for me, as a as Canon 7D Mark II user, I'm really gonna talk about this camera as a comparison to the 7D Mark II and, and what my impressions are of it as a photographer and also a videographer. First of all, the megapixels are practically the same. I think it's uh, 20.9 megapixels to around 20.2 megapixels on the Canon 7D. The, there is a new AF system in the Nikon D500. It takes the AF system in the flagship D5, which is similar to what the 7D Mark II did with the 1DX system. There is a new 153 by 99 cross point, cross type AF points um, system and obviously it's going to perform much better than it has in the past and it's going to be a remarkable sports camera to say the least. As far as the ISO range, it's going to be very interesting. Native ISO is hitting from 100 to 51,200 in terms of ISO, native ISO range, where you have the, the Canon, the 7D Mark II, which tops out at about 16,000 native ISO. And it's not even really an area you want to shoot in. But this push in ISO is really giving photographers and even some videographers the idea that this camera can probably push 12,800 safely uh, in their recording. There's a new snap bridge feature, which is basically a built-in wireless feature, which allows the automatic transfer of files onto digital phones or cell phones, smartphones. This feature was a long time coming. This should have already had been in here. Mirrorless cameras have already had this feature and a lot of photographers have had to do roundabout ways of using a wireless um, card, uh, like the iFi card system. So it's great that it's already built into the camera and we can quickly share our photos through social media. Again, with photographers in mind, 10 frames per second shooting, which matches up to the Canon 7D Mark II's 10 frames per second, so not a, not a huge jump there. They're both crop sensor cameras. What I'm getting, I think, I don't have all the information yet, but I wasn't too sure on the amount of raw photos that the camera could take um, in a row. It's at up to 200, but I don't know if that was just JPEG or JPEG raw, or I'm not 100% certain, but, um, on Digital Rev, their, their, their website, they posted 79 raw for the Nikon D500 
and 31 raw continuous raw with the Canon 7D Mark II. Now, if you're using a really fast card on either camera, I would think that the raw buffer would be just fine. If you're using a good card, it's gonna offload the images quickly and you really shouldn't have to worry about your camera slowing down. There is now, uh, I, I think that's as far as the photography feature. So let's go ahead and wrap up the photography aspect of it. If you are a photographer that's been waiting and you had a D300S, this is the camera you're gonna upgrade to. I mean, there, there really isn't any other doubt to it. I mean, you're not gonna go from, by the way, this camera is retailing for $2,000. You're not gonna wanna jump up to the Nikon D5. That might be probably out of your price range. But in terms of just specs for this camera, uh, as a, for a photographer, you are probably going to really love this camera in terms of the low light performance. I don't know if the high ISO performance is gonna match like a full frame camera, but in terms of just the information, it, it, it seems as if something, as, as if shooting at 6,400 and even 12,800 ISO, it's going to be, you know, reasonable for photographers. And that's kind of the area that uh, we struggle with is the high ISO. And, and that really is the big, the big issue. Now let's talk about video aspects to this camera and let's just get it out of the way. It is allowing you to shoot at 4K, 4K at up to 30 frames per second. This is now the first DSLR other than the 1D Cinema and now in conjunction with the Nikon D5 to be able to shoot 4K. That I'm saying DSLR, not DSLMs like the mirrorless system line. DSLR shooting 4K video. Now, as far as the frame rates, they didn't say anything about high frame rates like 120 frames per second or high speed frame rates. So right now, uh, you know, it's kind of as a toss up. You really don't know. My other question is whether or not the video quality is going to be soft and compressed. Uh, that's a big one and and if you if you've ever shot with like a micro four-thirds camera or even the Sony a7 series lines of cameras When you record you're getting really high fidelity and detail and quality in your shots But so far with the DSLR line of cameras the quality just wasn't there. It was really mushy so I'm hoping that This isn't the case and it's actually very clear and all the video quality has been upgraded and updated on these DSLR systems. There is now built-in touchscreen on this camera. We've already seen it in their lower end models like the D5300, I believe, or was it the D5500? There was already touchscreen built into that camera to be able to touch focus, and I think that's one of the prominent features of it. So that's gonna be an amazing feature for videographers because you're taking all the great things that the 7D had and now you're putting that into, um, they're taking some of those aspects into the Nikon D500. Here is where things get interesting. And something that I did not think a DSLR manufacturer would do, they included, I think a three axis image stabilization into the body of the camera. When I read that, I, I had to stop and ask myself, what in the world is going on? And they, Nikon puts this camera on the same playing field as the Sony A7 lines of cameras. Nikon is really digging teeth and nail and making sure that they still have ground and reason to exist in even the sphere of videographers. This isn't a wonderful photography camera, but if you're a videographer, this just got a little bit more interesting. You have touchscreen and touch autofocus. You have a screen that flips out. I don't know if it flips out all the way. I, I'm not too sure, but it's similar to the D750 in that regard. Uh, 4K video, I just don't know about, um, High speed, I just don't know about that. If, if they have high speed recording abilities, then that could be a big game changer. 
But the definite benefit that a lot of people are going to get out of this is if you are already a Nikon user, this is, this is going to be a great camera. This will be definitely a really great camera. You're going to get amazing low light performance. Um, amazing build quality, I'm sure of it, and the plethora of lenses that Nikon already offers. And now, even the fact that it's included image stabilization into the body, it's just gonna change things up for a lot of videographers. I just wanna mention that the recording time is has been bumped up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds. I think most Nikon cameras up until now have been at 20, 20 minutes, but I could be wrong on that. But that's just in, it, in itself a great addition. And I feel that the Nikon D500 now puts itself up right above uh, cameras like the Canon 7D Mark II and even in some cases the 5D Mark III. Although that is not in comparison to this camera because of it, the fact that it's a crop sensor and a full frame comparison. But I really think, you know, as a Canon user, the biggest wake up call is this. Nikon has now took a, taken a jab at Canon and I'm happy as a Canon user that the next iteration of Canon cameras has to not only match what Nikon has put together but also try and exceed it. There really isn't an excuse for it now. The Nikon D500 has 4K recording. There is Without a doubt, the next series camera, in this case the 1DX Mark II and also the Canon 5D Mark IV, are going to have 4K. I think that's without a doubt now. And that might be a misstep for Nikon, but the one argument I'm going to make in general is this. Canon and Nikon have lost a lot of, well, I'll specifically say Canon because a lot of videographers went to the Canon system, the 5D series, because from the 5D Mark II. But now, Sony's in the game. Panasonic's been in the game for so long now that, you know, I had to jump to a Panasonic GH4 in the G7 series. I have three cameras, I have a GH4, and two G7s that I use for 4K recording. And I also have a C100, but it only suits 1080p, although it's really good at low light. The real question is, is this enough for a videographer to jump into the Nikon system? And I don't wanna be a pessimist, but as for a videographer, I think it's might have been a little too late. This should have been the camera that came out maybe a year ago. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. Is this the camera that should have been out a year ago to tout and trump the Canon 7D Mark II? I feel now, even if Canon does release a 5D series at 4K, you know, I think everyone, all the videographers have jumped ship to Sony and Panasonic. The features are there, they're more well polished. Um, I think that's kind of where the, the motion's going. So I know, you know, I'm excited about this in general because consumers are getting better technology into the cameras. If you're a Nikon photographer and you wanted this camera, I, I congratulate you, I'm happy for you. Pre-order this camera, you're gonna be so impressed with it, I'm pretty sure of it. Hopefully Nikon won't have any issues on the release date <laughs> as if they've had in the past, but this has just been a complete bombshell in terms of just information. This camera pretty much supersedes the D5. I mean, the D5 is great, but the D500 is what everyone's gonna be talking about for the next several days and the next few weeks as far as like what it's able to do and what it can do in terms of 4K and even uh, the image quality at high ISO. Well, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you on the next one. Before I go, I just wanna say, if you like the video, go ahead and consider um, hitting the like button. It really helps me out. If you like the videos that I'm producing on my channel, you may wanna consider subscribing and staying tuned to the latest videos I produce. 
With that said, I'm, I'm that one camera guy and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.